Hey guys, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, the creator of the original Crock Pet Diet, and glad you can join me today. Hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving. I know I sure did, and uh, got some great uh, rest and relaxation in. I hope you enjoyed my post of Pepe, one of my cats, opening the bathroom door. Thank goodness he cannot apply a logic yet, so he hasn't been able to get into the compost bucket, but he's getting smarter all the time. So today I've got a couple of things to talk with you about. The first is uh, there was a notice from the FDA about bone treats killing a lot of dogs, and indeed that's the case. Over 68 dogs have died as a result of eating these, and mostly from the bones shattering inside the intestines and making perforations. So I want you to be clear though on the difference between raw meaty bones and bone treats. So bone treats are these things you can buy in the supermarket, um, some of the pet food stores, that sort of stuff. And what they are are bones that have been cooked and treated with some sort of a flavoring agent. So this is not a good idea from several standpoints. One, you know, your risk of your dog developing things like salmonella and other bacterial infections are high. The number two, and this is why so many dogs have gotten sick and or died as a result of eating these things, is that these cooked bones splinter. And so these little tiny splinters get into your dog's intestine and can actually rip and tear and do awful, terrible, horrific things. So and I will post a link below to some information about this, but this is why you don't want to feed uh, cooked bones, chicken bones, things of that nature, because of the risk of splintering. Raw bones, on the other hand, are something that your dog can gnaw on and gnaw on and gnaw on, and unless they are just you know giant vice grips of teeth, they're not going to be able to splinter off big chunks for the most part. So I will say that if your dog is 12, that is not the time to start offering raw bones because they're older, they're not accustomed to chewing so hard, and we do see fractured teeth. For young dogs, puppies, this is a great option. If you keep the bone frozen, it keeps bacterial contamination at a minimum. Um, you can throw the bone back in a bag in the freezer. So start them off slow regardless. Watch your dog because there are some dogs that will simply break every rule. No matter what we think the averages are, they're going to get into trouble. So no more than three to five minutes the first several times they chew. We've had dogs that were given a raw bone and they were so delighted with it, they chewed for hours and hours and hours and then couldn't literally could not open their mouths the next day because they had just cranked all these masseter muscles in the jaw on top of the head into little tiny shredded knots because uh, they simply weren't accustomed to chewing that much. So use common sense, think your way through, get the organically raised bones. So bone is a tissue that stores heavy metals like lead, mercury, all those very unattractive things. Um, so get the organic ones if you're going to give your pets raw bones. Get them appropriately, appropriately sized. A two inch chunk of bone, um, you know, that's two inches in diameter, basically that's a slice of tibia, is not appropriate for a Great Dane. Likewise, a ginormous knuckle bone, not appropriate for a dachshund. So think that through a little bit. Again, I'll have the link to that uh, report from Dog Food Advisor about the FDA statement on bone treats. Big distinction, bone treats, no. Raw bones, yes. Think it through though. So Annie wrote in asking about um, what to do for her dog with arthritis. She's just started using the crock pet diet and her pup is a nine-year-old chihuahua who is unfortunately on prednisone. And they've tried several times to wean him off the prednisone, but once they get to off for several days, then he just can't walk anymore. I think this is what you're asking, Annie. Um, so what else can we do? Well, you're, you've already started the number one thing. So remember, from a functional medicine view, 
viewpoint, so much chronic disease has its basis in, in inflammation. And that is one of the things that the original Crocvet diet is designed to help relieve and to essentially treat by giving a diet that's appropriate for your pet. And so you're off to the races there. Um, the other thing is, is that we tend to be sort of all or nothing with medicine. And I've, you know, while prednisone isn't great, it's also better than your dog not walking. So use it in the short term, but try to titrate the dose down as low as you can go. I've had several dogs that literally, you know, 50 pound dogs that literally a five pound, excuse me, a five milligram prednisone tablet once a week was the difference between comfort and not comfort. Now, if you talk to most doctors, they'll tell you that that is not an effective dose and it shouldn't be, but it is for that dog. And so at that, you know, tiny dose, we're going to minimize our impact with all the potential side effects of prednisone. Same thing with non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So, you know, we've been, when we first got these things, um, like all of the human ones, everybody put every dog on, on this wonder tablet, drop, or whatever it is, every day for the rest of their lives. And we'll check liver enzymes every three months until disaster happens, and then we go, oh crud, what do we do now? You can use it once a week. That may be plenty to keep your dog comfortable. Now, having said that, there are plenty of other options as far as pain control goes and, and doing that naturally. So uh, Annie mentions that acupuncture is not an option for her, and I get it. That is definitely one of the first places I would go, though, if acupuncture is available in your community from a veterinarian. The second thing you might consider is cold laser therapy. Uh, companion laser is what I used in my practice. It worked beautifully and the dogs got great pain relief. You can go to Companion Laser's website and they have a practitioner lookup so you can see if there's someone in your community that has one of these machines. It's an awesome option. Nutritionally, what else can we do? If you're not using a joint supplement like glucosamine or glucose or chondroitin sulfate, those two things are anti-inflammatory. And there's tons of different options out there. They are often chicken based. So if your dog is sensitive to chicken, that's not a great option. But MSM, methyl, methyl sulfmethoxide, often is, and it is not a food based uh, supplement. So that's often safe to use. Other things that are great are hyaluronic acid and uh, along that line, Adequan injections can be very helpful as well. So Adequan is derived from, again, a chicken coxcomb, um, but it, it's a precursor, if you will, to the materials, raw materials needed inside the joint to help uh, protect the joint cartilage as well as improve the viscosity of the joint fluid. So basically there's more cushion in the joint. So if your joint fluid is, is pretty thin, it's going to compress under weight. If the viscosity increases, it's more dense. So it's kind of the difference between if you think about um, if you've ever made jello, right? So that includes uh, a glucosamine essentially. Uh, component and that's what makes the jello congeal. So, but if you look at the viscosity of, of water versus jello, you can see and you can feel it. You know, you can feel that there's some stickiness to it. So that's why Adequan can be really helpful. The joint supplement I relied on in practice for many, many years is Arthur E's Gold, which we, you know, still carry on the original Crock Pet Diet website. And I'll put a link to that there so you can get an idea of what the ingredients you're looking for. But I always called it the kitchen sink of joint supplements, and indeed it is. So it's your standard stuff, glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM. It includes boswellia, uh, yucca, and vitamin C, as well as hyaluronic acid. And I think that that hyaluronic acid has made an enormous difference for many pets. So um, if you've it, but again, if your pet has sensitivities to chicken, uh, it's not a great one because it is flavored with chicken, but it's also part of why it's easy to give for most dogs. So I hope that makes sense. Again, I'll put a link to the, um, to the Arthur's Gold on, a, on our website there so you can take a look at that. So Donna Marie, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Um, 
So the other things you could consider are curcumin. I mean, that's hugely talked about. And you want to find a curcumin product that contains at least the Meriva component, M-E-R-I-V-A. And that seems to be one of the more efficacious forms of it. It's a great anti-inflammatory, and so is Boswellia, which is um, used in Chinese medicine extensively as well. Um, the other thing, certainly don't forget about the simple stuff like um, uh, brain cells. They went, went, out, went on the glitch for the moment. Sorry about that. So the other simple stuff, fish oil. It's a great anti-inflammatory and it's effective on so many levels. So you do want to use a higher dose though. Uh, so we look at a fish oil capsule and it's a thousand milligrams. What you're really looking for there is the EPA and DHA content. And so that's actually about 230 milligrams for a standard capsule. So the anti-inflammatory dose of fish oil is about 100 milligrams of the omega-3 fatty acids per kilogram of body weight. So to translate, like, translate that back to your average 50 pound dog, that's about 2,800 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids. So that's 12 capsules of fish oil. That's a little tough. So that's part of why uh, the crock pet fish oil that we've got on also on our website is a little simpler to use. It's 2,800 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids per teaspoon. Uh, so that's helpful. There's double strength capsules available out there as well. Again, because you're using a fish oil product in an extremely high dose, it is imperative to know that the manufacturer is very careful about getting rid of heavy metals, PCBs, and other nasty contaminants. So consider that and also look for a product that is made from anchovies and sardines, which are much more sustainable than, say, cod liver oil. Unfortunately, we're overfishing so much, and so if we use fish that are lower down that uh, predator scale, if you will, we're into a more sustainable uh, pool of fish. Probiotics, again and again I come back to this, but if 70% of your immune system resides in your gut, and if the good guys are in charge, they are producing anti-inflammatory molecules for your pet to use. They are active not only in the intestine, but also through the rest of the body. So probiotics are essential. Um, if your pet's not had any GI issues and no other issues like skin disease, itchies, that kind of stuff, um, sort of a maintenance dose would be to load on probiotics uh, daily for two weeks and then once a week. Again, you're going to use a high dose product, um, and I've, you know, the product I've chosen for for our uh, Probiotum Max is an extremely high dose product. It's 100 billion colony forming units per dose, versus the average of 5 billion colony form forming units per dose on most of the over the counter stuff. It also is refrigerated, and we know it's efficacious. So, if your pet has had health issues, any type of uh, GI issues, skin disease, arthritis, anything that says chronic inflammation, give that daily for at least 30 days and then gradually titrate down. Go to every other day dosing for a couple of weeks. If you see no difference in how your pet's feeling, try twice a week dosing for a couple of weeks. No problems there, then drop down to once a week. The idea with once a week dosing is that it takes somewhere between 7 and 14 days for the populations of the good guys in your gut to drop down. So if you're re-inoculating every seven days, you're beating that population dropout and refilling and recharging your pet's GI tract with the good guys. So they are just, I mean, I keep coming back to those two supplements, but it's just been, uh, you know, the most literally the most bang for your buck. So again, controlling arthritis pain naturally, number one, what's your pet eating? If it's eating, uh, you know, bagged food that's high in corn, high in processed carbohydrates, that is a pro-inflammatory food. So if that's if that's not what your pet's eating, if pardon me, my my tongue's all tied up today. If that is what your pet's eating, consider strongly going to the original crock pet diet, home cooking for your pet, um, or using a food like. Um, 
origin or something of that nature that uses far fewer processed carbohydrates. Number two, supplements. Um, so, you know, probiotics, fish oil, some sort of a joint supplement, and then uh, curcumin, there's all sorts of other good stuff. Uh, so if you need help with figuring out where to get those, email us at support at the original crockpetdiet.com and we'll be happy to help you with that. And then number three, uh, Twina. There's a video on available on my website that goes through very basic Twina, which is a type of body work that's used in Chinese medicine. And you can help start to loosen things up so that there's not so much joint pain. Uh, passive range of motion video is also available. Another great way to get things moving. So it's like all of us. If you've been sitting still and hunkering down um, because you don't want to move, uh, because it hurts, you get really stiff. And so there's this contrary thing where it hurts to move, but it's painful not to move as well. So again, small movements. So as I've discussed over the course of the year, part of me being able to get back to exercise was to recognize that I couldn't work out for an hour, but I could get up and walk for five minutes. And then two or three weeks later, I can walk for 10 minutes. And two or three weeks later, I can walk for 15 minutes. And now I'm back to being able to lift heavy. In fact, I did a deadlift two days ago at 70 pounds, which isn't huge, but it's a lot more than zero. And so that's my point gradually build your exercise level up for your pets so that they're able to do it comfortably and able to and they're starting to look forward to it. Um, heat pads are great. If you have a local massage therapist for pets that is awesome. In our Charleston area if you don't know Mike Daly go check him out. He's on Facebook and used to work for me uh, and has and still does massage therapy on my guys he saw and Mona and it makes an enormous difference that he's able to get in there and release knots and release tension and get that fascia moving again so that these guys can move more comfortably as, as I may have told you in the past Esau's 15 Mona's 14 we take three 10 minute walks a day because that's what's good for them when Mike comes and does a massage on them, they are stepping out the next day. They feel so much better. And the trick is to help them not overspend their energy. So that's, that's kind of another one there too. Uh, if you've got a local swimming pool, that's a great way to get things moving without putting pressure on the joints. So Annie also was asking what to do about the prednisone. As I mentioned sort of at the beginning of all of this, you know, it's not, none of us want to be on drugs, but they help us. And so what you want to do is to be able to titrate that dose down somewhat. So recognizing, so Annie's recognized every time they try to take the prednisone away, her poor pup can't walk. And so the deal is, is to titrate that dose down. So if you're giving it every day or every other day, you know, try dropping the dose in half every other day. So just kind of play with it and find what's right. And remember that over time, you know, once you've had three, four, five, six weeks of feeding crock pet, adding in supplements, things of that nature, you may, able, may be able to titrate down and down and down and hopefully off. So that's kind of something to, to bear in mind. Chronic conditions are, I'd love to tell you I can make them all go away instantly, but often they take a while to get there. So it's kind of like this. If it took you six years to feel cruddy and to get to the sort of the peak of the worst of your disease or your inflammation or whatever it is you got going on, is it going to go away in a month? Probably not. Are you going to feel better on the pills in a few days? Sometimes. So use that as a way to help yourself get moving and, and your pets get moving Use the medications to help them feel better, but have your goal be to back that down as little as possible. Most veterinarians, again, will tell you that no, five milligrams of prednisone once a week in a 50 pound dog is not effective. But for many dogs, it's enough to help keep the difference between moving comfortably and not. Rationally, it shouldn't work, but indeed it does. So again, you're gonna have to experiment with your pet to see what it is that actually does or does not work. So I hope that makes some sense. Um, 
Again, I'll put the link about the bone treats that are killing dogs uh, down in the comments section. There's a couple of other things we've got coming up that are, that are really cool. One is tomorrow, uh, there's a free class with Rocky Kanaka who's got a uh, show about rescuing pets, which is just awesome. But he's going to do a cooking demonstration for a ginger gingerbread cookie uh, that's perfect for the holidays. There's a couple of folks that are um, supporting this broadcast along with me, and so there'll be some awesome prizes if you show up. So the way to watch it is tomorrow, just come back to uh, the Dr. Ruth Roberts Crock Pet Diet page at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'll be sharing that video live on my page. Uh, the second really cool thing is my dear friend and colleague, Will Falconer, who's a homeopathic veterinarian, has, has a four-part uh, video workshop where he talks about uh, how to help your pelt, pet get healthy and avoid some of the things that we do commonly in veterinary medicine that were intended to protect your dog, but unfortunately often don't. So and I, what I'm talking about is over-vaccinating, um, the bag of food, all of that kind of stuff. Will's got a great perspective. He's been practicing veterinary medicine for 40 years and has been practicing homeopathy, uh, homeopathy rather, for exclusively for almost 30 three years. Uh, he's got, he's, his perspective on food is more towards the raw bent, but he understands that it's, you know, you've got to figure out again what's right for you and your pet. So he's a wealth of information. I'll have a link where you can go sign up for that uh, video course. And uh, the first two videos have aired already. The next one is starting tomorrow, but you can go back and watch the previous videos. So that's what I've got for you today, guys. Have you got questions for me that I haven't answered? I you know, see Erica joining, and I'm glad, glad you're able to hop in with us, Erica. Um, if you've got questions, let me know. I uh, am always happy to answer them. You can message us on Facebook. You can email us at support at the original crockpetdiet.com. Um, you know, any which way it works to you for, that's easiest for you to get, a, get in touch with us. We're happy to, uh, happy to answer any questions we can. So that's what I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next week with some more information for you. Remember, your pet's best health starts in the bowl.